Okay, this is Home on the Range on page 150 and 51. And this is a lead sheet. We've talked about this in class. A lead sheet is, at least, you know, it's usually in lots of popular music. This is what you'll see as a lead sheet, and it means melody. So the, the right hand is going to, it's only the melody has been written out, and it's in the treble clef. And we've been putting chord symbols up above your staffs all semester, so this is where all the chord symbol reading is going to be. So if you'll notice up above, it has C, F, G7. So we're going to be using our three primary chords. And then the F in the new position. We're going to keep the C and move the F and the A up. And then back to C. And now we're going to do the G7. Here's the G. Here's the 7. And then we're going to move the little finger down to the B. And so these are your three chords play in this piece and none of them are written out you'll just have a chord symbol written above the treble staff always on count one is when you'll play these chords and if there's not a chord written above count one in a measure such as here you see the C on count one seldom is heard there's nothing there but what you do is you have to play another chord always on count one You'll just play whatever chord you had before, and then when they want you to change chords, that's when they'll indicate a new chord. So we'll have an F chord here and an F chord here. When you get down here, you'll have a C. Even if there's a tie, you're gonna do a C, and another C, and another. So there's lots of C chords in a row we can look forward to right there. So let's learn this melody first. So we're gonna start on G. And we're getting a little more stretchy out. We're not sticking with just five finger scale now. So we're gonna put your third finger on the C because you're gonna do that. So we have two G's and this is count three. One, two, three, G, two G, C, D, hold. And then we're right here with your thumb on A, which is good. We're gonna come down to this A. But then we have to stretch up even higher to this F, and there's three of those. And I have two more Fs, so I'm gonna swap out my fourth finger for it because I've gotta go up on the next line, F, F, G. So F, F, G, and then I have a C, but I'm not gonna put my thumb on it, I'm gonna put my two on it because I need my thumb for the B. And then I'm going to play these two notes, and then I have a tie. So let's do that first phrase. So I'm going to count, start on count three. One, have my third finger on C. So, and then my next pattern is stretch higher, switch even higher. So I'm going to go all the way from this G to this G, and we're going to just kind of shift our way up. One two, two G's, third finger on C, hold for two, these are eighth notes, now just reach a little higher to the F, hold, now switch out for fourth finger, get to the high G, here's my second finger on C, and then I hold, two, three, hold, rest, and then I just start over. I have two G's, Third finger goes to C, and then I'm going to do C, A, B, A, stretch up to F, and then, you know, it says to switch to a fourth finger, but we're not going up to G, so I would stay on that fifth finger and go step down, step down, step down, B, two, three, hold. Or, the reason why they do suggest doing your fourth finger, I'll show you. You're going to have to cross over, but that's kind of fun. 
So if my thumb is on here, I'm ready for the next notes at measure 17, which are the top notes of a C chord. See, I'm all set. If, I, if you choose to do the fifth finger on the F, you'll have to hold, and then all you have to do is move your thumb up, and then you're ready. So the next part, and here's my forte, because that was mezzo forte, I'm going to play not the whole chord, but just the top two notes of the C chord. And then I have three notes in a row. And then I do the bottom two notes of the C chord. So I start here and I end here. And I have to move to the same position I started with, with my thumb on G and my third finger on C. So I've got four C's in a row. I step down and hold, two, three. It's a tie for two. Then I'm doing the last exact same line that I already did. Starting at measure um, at the end of eight. So this would be our A section. And then we start again, and it's a little different, so that would be A1. And then we just got through with the B section, which is completely different. And then I'm gonna replace my thumb with my third finger and reach down to my G. So when I'm going into measure 25, it's just like going into measure 9. It's going to be the exact same thing. C, D, E. Here's my eighth notes. Stretch up to the F. And then you can either keep your fifth finger on the F or put your four there. Because it's exactly the same. So we have the A section, A1, the middle section B that's different, and then A1 again. Now here's the fun part. You have to add your chords. So I've got two C chords, two F chords, two C chords, and then two G7 chords. So let's do that first phrase. So I'm not gonna play my chord until count one. So this is count three and one two and play my chord and now switch to F chord now I'm going to put my four on this F so I can get to the G reach down second finger five seven left hand G seven and I'm going to just start over C chord C chord again even though it doesn't say it F chord, up to the F, then here comes my C chord, and my G7, and hold, two, three, another chord, two, now the top of the C chord, one, two, three, G7, C chord, and another C chord, Measure nine. C chord. F chord. And then the ending. And G seven. 